This time we have our superintendent's report. Thank you, President Maher. I want to begin by extending my gratitude to city staff, along with METI and our POSD maintenance and operations team, for their work to mitigate effects of the storm over winter break. The, the city helped up, stepped up to help at Foothill High School when the, the creek overran its banks and flowed into the tennis courts and into the swimming pool. The city manager reached out to offer help as, as the event was unfolding and their team helped uh, tremendously. Um, we had a number of school sites affected by the storm with downed trees, flooded pools, and mudslides. And our maintenance team worked tirelessly to ensure that our schools were safe and ready to welcome students and staff back as schools reopened in January. So thank you to METI and the team for working pretty much uh, throughout the break. Um, that was a, a lot of extra work and we all are very grateful for your efforts. Our school district's collaboration and relationship with the city has meant a great deal, deal to me personally and benefits both our students and staff as well as the broader community. This partnership is a sign of a healthy and thriving community. We've successfully collaborated with city staff throughout our facilities master planning process, which led to the creation of Measure I, which was passed by the community a few months back. Again, thank you, Pleasanton voters. In addition to facilities needs, our schools, school systems across the state and country continue to face very real staffing shortages. And inflation continues to drive up the cost of living and making finding affordable housing very difficult, especially for newer teachers. As I've discussed before, providing workforce housing has become an even more vital part of our facilities master planning process. We're a community of learners that thrive, that lives within the broader community of Pleasanton. We believe that it's in the best interest of our families to provide teachers and support staff with the opportunity to live in the community where they serve. It ensures stability, community involvement, and stronger ties between teachers, their students, and their families. But for many, this opportunity is just too far out of reach. Through engaging our neighbors and in collaboration with the city staff, we believe we have a workable plan to develop workforce housing that meets the needs and matches the, community, or the character of our community. We shared the concept with city staff and had hopes that the council would join us. We were disheartened to watch as the city council significantly reduced dense housing density for the district's Bernal and Vineyard properties, making workforce housing unfeasible within the city zoning process. Our option is to forego any hope of pursuing workforce housing or engage a state process that would force significantly more density levels on our properties. We are ready to move forward together and look forward to the opportunity to continue collaborating towards a shared vision for workforce housing. We call on the members of the City Council to join us in the planning process that results in Pleasanton becoming the first city in the region to address workforce housing needs within a locally driven design process. That's my report. Thank you, Dr. Hagelin. Any questions? Any trustees? Okay.